and YTPC camping friends following videos just going to show uh, some dewinterization we completed yesterday in the rain terrible camping buff cob lay one keel and morning coffee just enjoying it looks like we're going to get one good nice day in to relax hope you enjoy this following video Morning YTPC, Buckeye Piper, YTPC and camping friends. So today's the first day we're gonna get the camper out. There's Mrs. Buckeye looking all serious. So we're gonna get the camper. You see Nanners and Cheese in the background and Bo's nose right over my shoulder here. He's panting away. So anyhow, today it's rainy, crappy, sucks. So it's not gonna be a great camping, but we figure it's we just got to get it out get it dewinterized i'll probably show a few scenes of things we got to do to get it dewinterized just for fun and um we get it dewinterized and then we'll be ready for for nicer days and better camping um, we've got a trip to south carolina coming up here in, in a few weeks that'll be fun but anyhow it, we'll probably be stuck inside most of the the week but you know it's still fun we still get to watch movies read books chill out and get away from it all and disconnect so and if we get a sneak out, hopefully I at least could have a pipe or two, but we'll see. But anyhow, I'll catch up with you later. We're just getting headed out and um, we'll catch you in a minute. All right, here we are. Looks like the cover stayed pretty good. So we're gonna get her uncovered, put the battery in. Hopefully it's charged enough and get on the road. Hopefully no flat tires or anything, but we'll see. So got her all hooked up on the first shot, wasn't too bad, cover came off pretty well. Battery was dead, but we powered off the truck, which was great, so um, let's take a gander, she looks pretty good. Tires looked okay. Parking in the field, I sometimes wonder if we're going to get mice, doesn't look like it. We do a pretty good job of making sure it's, there's no mice and we're ready to go. So. We're gonna get ready to unhook her and start towing her to uh, about a half an hour. We're going to Greenville, North Carolina uh, for a couple of days. And the rain, check it out. We beat the rain. So that, that was totally kick ass right there. Catch it a few. So we're in a really beautiful campground. A lot of open room, man. We're gonna have to come back here more often. This is absolutely gorgeous. So we're gonna kind of show you some steps I do to unwinterize the camper. Um, we had to level a little bit. You see that red, that red deal right there? That's to help level and stabilize the camper. Um, well, it levels it. It doesn't stabilize it. We have something else I'll show you later that's really great for stabilizing. This is a really cool setup here. I've not seen one like this, but um, we use an RV filter, uh, water filter, and then our RV also filters water. So we have double filtrated water and then still drink bottled water because I don't trust it. But you see, very nice. We're at site five. Very cool. They have 30 and 50 amp hookups. I've got my 30 amp circuit breaker running over. We're already powered up. So now I'm going to hook up my water. And the first step is going to be to flush out all of the antifreeze that we put in it last fall. So I'll check with you here in a second. All right, at this point, we'll turn the water on. And this is... Uh, an interesting setup usually they're above ground but this water it's got a hook down here or a handle down there so water on and you can see i've already hooked it up to my city water connection i use one of these although it's saying i don't know if it's reading really well it's saying that it's high i doubt that that's true but uh, this thing really protects the camper. It doesn't let um, too high pressure of water go through it. Let me turn it off and see. Sometimes these needles break, but I'm going to turn it off and just see if it's, it registers something different. Yeah, this is with it shut off, so it's still reading high when there's absolutely no water turned on. So um, I have a bad tendency of breaking these. It still works. This coupling will still hold the PSI, uh, you just won't have the visual. Uh, those are probably kind of cheap. A lot of them are made that they don't even um, 
have that little reader on it that's just a coupling. So as long as the coupling's there, that'll be fine. But the water's going. Now we're going to go inside and show you how to de-winterize the sinks and, and tubs and everything. So at this point of the game, we're just going to turn the water on and it should run pink for a little bit. We're going to run it till it runs clear. You can see the pink. That's the antifreeze we put in last winter, last fall. And now here comes the air being pushed by the, the new water coming through. This antifreeze is, is able to be able to go right down your drain and you can put it right out to a pump station. It's not, it's not toxic or anything. Um, I wouldn't recommend drinking it, but people say, you know, the reason it's for RVs and for boats is you can antifreeze your lines without worrying about it the next year. So it's still running kind of pink. We put a lot of antifreeze in because I just wasn't sure how it was going to run uh, this year in North Carolina. So better safe than sorry, you know, 20 bucks of antifreeze as opposed to hundreds if not thousands to have all of your, all of your uh, plumbing rewired. No thank you. I should mention the hot water heater is still in the off position. It's still bypassed. The anode rods in here uh, will do that last. I like to flush my lines first and get all the pink crap out of the lines before I put in my new my, my filter. From I'm just going to use last year's filter because we didn't camp a lot. Uh, but before I put in my new filter, you can see it's running pretty clear now. But we've got to do this in every single um, in, in every single faucet in in, in the house or in the, in the RV. So. That's looking pretty good and running pretty clear right now. So we're going to move to the bathroom next. Same thing in the bathroom. It's going to come out pink. That's all of the antifreeze again. All the junk from last year that protected us. And once it starts running, here comes the air pocket. And that'll push the rest of the antifreeze out. Here comes clear water. So now we're purging the system of the antifreeze and getting clear water, clear potable water in through our lines and we don't drink out of our water lines the dogs do we don't we just use it for shower and maybe cooking and maybe coffee we usually drink bottled water so that's okay and even though we bypass the hot water there's still hot water lines that you have to flush out here so you definitely want to make sure you flush both cold and hot um, to get all that antifreeze crap out of there and you want to do them one at a time And as you can see, it starts running clear. Antifreeze is going away. And we're back to summer level of clear water, clear, fresh water. Now, you have to do it with your commode as well. You see, I like to leave a little bit in the commode. The reason I do that is, it, and I don't know if it's beneficial or not, but it supposedly helps protect the rubber seal so it doesn't dry out. But we're going to have to hold this down and flush it and get the antifreeze see same thing here again this is just going in our holding tank and there's nothing wrong with putting this down into the sewers that's exactly what it's made uh, again it's made it's they say you can drink it again I'm not but it does protect us protects our investment so commode looks good and we'll go to the shower next so the shower same thing Let's see make sure we didn't leave it oh uh, yeah one of us left it turned on last year okay so shower head down and uh, these are things we put in here I don't know if they work or not, but it's supposed to keep mice and, and spiders out, but we didn't have mice or spiders, so we'll do it again. But as you can see, same thing, same water system. And I highly recommend getting all this rinsed out and not letting it set. They say it could stain, stain your stuff. So we're gonna make sure everything's rinsed off real good. And down the Looks like we did pick up a few bugs, which is kind of normal. 
we're pretty level, so I gotta check the drain. It should be draining a little bit better than that. Alright, now let me switch over here. That was the hot. Let's get to the cold. There comes the tank. And then when you're winterizing, it's kind of the same practice. I've got a winterization inlet that I use. Basically, I just turn my water pump backwards uh, by, by a uh, valve, and it sucks the uh, it sucks it out of the jug for me, so it's super easy to do. And same thing in the winter, you run, instead of running pink to clear, you run clear to pink. And once you start seeing your pink, then you're good to go. I'm going to shut this down. I want to still do the outside shower and show you all that, but I'm going to shut this down. Well, it looks like we're good here. Okay, we just unlocked the shower. Uh, this is the outside shower. We don't really use it much, but it's nice if you got pots or pans or whatever. But in the winter, do not forget to winterize your shower. That's the one that's sneaky that some people forget, and it could really mess you up. You see, we're going to run it pink to clear, just like we did inside. Shower is nice outside if you're at a beach or something, or we use it. The times we do use it is if we're grilling and it's greasy stuff that we don't want to take into the RV. We'll, we'll come out here and rinse it off. Or if we want to rinse the dogs off, that's always a nice option. I mean, it, it has its advantages. I wouldn't get rid of the shower, but it didn't look very pink. So I know I got it in there last year. Let me just double check, make sure I got it running. Yeah. And likely some of it bled out of the lines when I was running the other lines, but I still like to check them all. Okay, so we're good on the shower. And I'm paranoid, I always like to shut off the valves or shut off the handles before I turn off the, the shower head. So I'll show you the next step here in a second. You can see in here the filter, it's already been flushed out. It was, it was basically, um, Full of antifreeze and now it's not so my next step is going to be to go inside I've shut the water off I'm going to go inside open up the kitchen uh, sink valve that takes the pressure off of this canister I'll remove my canister then and put the filter back in and we'll be good to go for the year so I'll show you that see I've removed the filter from the housing assembly now and it's sitting right here um, it'll uh, it'll go in and the filters in it'll It'll get reinstalled here in just a second. All right, you can see the filters installed. The arrows lined up with that little notch there. And I'll turn the water on. We'll find out if it's installed. Okay, yep, filled up good. I don't have any leaks, strips, runs. Looks good. So I've got double filtrated water now into the coach. Next step is the water heater, which is this guy right here. And he's a pain in my ass. Um, so I'll show you that. I do not have access panels on my water heater. I have to reach back here and turn all those valves all the way through this compartment. So that'll be interesting. But first, before I do that, I need to put in my anode rod. No fun to do this in the rain, but here's the water heater. And you can see down here is the drain plug where I'm gonna put the anode rod. I'm using last year's anode rod. Everybody says, ooh, get a new one. This one's in great shape. We didn't use it a lot. Yeah, it looks a little beat up, but for those of you not familiar with an anode rod, it's a steel core, and it's got either aluminum, magnesium, or zinc, I believe, wrapped around it. The purpose of this is to take the beading so that your steel water heater does not rust. I usually throw a little plumber's tape around it to help with the seal. But this goes in before you obviously unbypass your water heater. So I'm gonna put the anode rod in next and I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. So to do this, you need an extension um, on your ratchet and a one and one eighth socket is what we use. I've heard some people say they could use a one inch, but this one works pretty good. And you can see it's in now. And this was the same issue I had last year. It doesn't show that it's all the way in. It looks like it's all the way at, it's hanging out some, but we ran it like that all last year and it was fine. I don't know if it's just a different anode with this kind of water heater and just not maybe uh, 
you know, maybe the screws are set up a little different or, or the threads, I mean, set oh. up a little different. So we'll see. Um, and we'll turn the water on and we'll find out. So this is the major pain in the rear. Like I said, I've got to reach over the hot water, or just the water heater, not the hot water heater. Get all the way in the back and there's three, the cold, the hot, and the bypass valve that I've got to get to. So uh, I'm not going to be able to show you while I do this, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and do it. And I'll probably try to insert a picture in the video to kind of show you what the three valves look like. Almost every other camper I've ever seen has a Dagon access panel. This one does not for whatever reason. But it's got a lot of nice other things that I enjoy. So I can, access panel is the worst thing that's missing. I can do that. So the valves have been opened, all three of them. And if you listen, you can hear it. You can hear that water rushing in there. There's no leaks coming out it's where the anode rod is down in here. So we're good. So should take a few minutes to fill up the six gallon water heater and then we'll turn on the hot water, the, the water heater, we'll turn on the heater itself. We use electric most of the time and we'll have hot water here shortly, half hour or so probably. But um, that's pretty much it for dewinterization. We've got some odds and ends to pick up, but we've got all the uh, lines flushed out, hot water set back up. We've set back up our um, filtration system so we're good there and uh, as you can see still looking good no leaking or anything going on just a miserable day to do this it's just rainy but you know it's spring you got to get it done so that you can enjoy it this summer all right i did find out this gauge is broken i did shut off the water and it still reads high so this may be the broken one. I had a new one and a broken one, and maybe I just grabbed the broken one again. Like I said, it'll still work because this is the piece that, that's the important piece. That's the reducer to reduce the PSI going into the coach. This just gives you an idea, but if it's not working, beautiful day, except for the rain, beautiful sights, wide open. I don't know if that's showing up very good on a Dagon camera or not, but anyhow, I'll catch you here in a bit. It's a little drier now, but really windy out here, but we use these X-Locks. If you haven't tried them, man, these things make a huge difference. I know we don't need a chalk with the X-Lock, but man, these things stabilize the coach so well. So when you're inside moving around and rocking, um, great investment great great investment so we got them actually at uh i believe it was uh camping world they were having a promotion last fall if you signed up for uh, something it wasn't a credit card or anything if you signed up for good sam's we got 50 percent off so we have 50 percent off those they are worth every penny so anyhow it's looking all right out here nice area it's open this is our first time here this is only about 50 60 miles from where we live so we'll be coming probably here some more uh, but beautiful open areas so pretty excited uh, wish it wasn't at least it's not raining now wish it wasn't as windy so that we could enjoy uh, sitting outside and putting the awning down but maybe this evening so anyhow I'll catch up with you there you have it folks that was dewinterizing our Rockwood RV yesterday. Much better day today. So hopefully you enjoyed the video. Pretty easy to dewinterize. I'll do a winterization video this fall when we get to that. Much easier to, to dewinterize than it is to winterize. Winterize is easy. It just takes a little bit more time to blow out all the lines and everything. But enjoy your day. Wishing you all the blessings in the world. Stay safe out there. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. We'll catch you next time.